The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Now, we cannot be right with God until we are right with one another. Until we have done our best to remove the practical consequences of sin or what an offense might have caused. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and then remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to them. Then, Come and offer your gifts. Now we signed of last week saying that we need to examine this scripture in the context of the whole teachings of the word of God. That's Otherwise, all of us who have to be leaving church go looking for people who have issues against us. Therefore, someone may have something against you, but it is, is it really the case that you have offended the person or that you are at fault? See, one may be offended because you were trying to set the record straight. One may be offended because you took your stand. One may be offended because you never gave in to an evil demand. So do you have to leave your offering at the altar because somebody has a, an issue against you and go and reconcile before you come to church or come and uh, continue with the offering? Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and then remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and be reconciled to them, then come. And offer your gift. You see, the apostle John knew this word that Jesus taught. In fact, he was there when Jesus taught on the mount. Yes. Yes. Yet he says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. 1 John 3, 21 22. Dear friends, if our heart do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. Now, let me take that again. It's a very big one. Dear friends, if our heart do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. The next verse. And receive from him, God, anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. 
na sedi eso na ye ye die eso neni now is this a contradiction hwe we ene ebo ebra na is a contradiction of Jesus's teaching in Matthew 5 ene yesu nche chire no ebo ebra ana no there be you see john my my favorite apostle adolfo no smafu yohani the empena sempa no um he was a relative of Christ and friend. Oh, yes, you need to see any ah, a sign by you and a down for power. Oh, you see any of you and a down for power. The disciples all agree. Now, we as you have been the closest to Jesus. Or did you say no, Ben? Yes, ye papa. So he understands what he's talking about. And the organ or the see ye here, he seeks to bring out the true meaning of Matthew 5 23. 24. As they were taught. He is trying to explain that it is true that if you are offering your gift at the altar and then remember that your brother or sister has something against you. Leave your gift there in front of the altar. First, go and receive, reconcile to them, then come and offer your gift. Or and but here he is explaining that at the altar, you, it may come to your consciousness that someone has something against you. But John says, if your heart does not condemn you, then go ahead with your offering. You will remember that this person has something like this. But he is saying that it doesn't mean that because someone has something against you, leave the offering there and go. That is not what Jesus really meant. But Jesus was saying that if your heart does not condemn you, go ahead. But if your heart condemns you, stop the offering. Mm -hmm. See, John is trying to explain here that your sacrifice will not be in vain. Why? Because you keep his command and do what pleases him. Your conscience does not condemn you. His son said, Woody, now said, Yes, so now we had your son and Nintendo, Cosuama, why, yeah, dear no, na a bayon for so dick as here, Eddie Amount. See, brothers and sisters, I don't know. There is a light in every soul. Here, your work can near a walk, be a mo, Christian or non Christian, say, or your Christoni, say, on your Christoni. It resides in the heart of man. Now, we know a winnie pacumum. It dwells in the spirit. It is called conscience. There is a, there is a light in every soul. Placed there by God. To check our behavior and our actions. It dwells in the human spirit. Some people call it conscience. Proverbs 20, verse 27. Proverbs 20, verse 27. The human spirit is a small letter S, so it's not the Holy Spirit. The human spirit, and every human being, born again or not born again, has a spirit, is the lamp of the Lord that sheds light on one's inmost being. It is the lamp of God that He has placed in everyone's spirit. And it shares light. In one's inmost being. Now we shall soon realize that 
Nobody knows what is in your spirit except yourself. But the, the, the lamp of God will shed light. Conscience is defined as a person's moral sense of right and wrong. A person's moral sense of right and wrong viewed as acting as a guide to one's behavior. God knows that we are all not going to have the Holy Spirit, but he doesn't you you still want human beings to behave as as it is done in heaven. So he places a lamp in our spirit to help us check our behavior. As chapter 24, and 16. As 24, 15, and 16. And I have the same hope in God as these men themselves have that there will be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. Sometimes when we are preaching, we say that the, 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 the dead in Christ shall arise. The dead in Satan too will rise. Some will rise to eternal glory. The others will rise to eternal condemnation. Because of the knowledge that the dead will rise, listening to Paul verse 16. If we did not let's read together, ready to go. So I strive always to keep my conscience clear before God and man. See before God and man. Sometimes people say that even God knows that I'm telling the truth. Let man also know. See, carry yourself like that even before man, they can exonerate you from certain things. So they be a nipper to make us a way yet. As 23 verse 1. Now this, look at the greatness of Paul. What makes him great? It's not because he was so much of an intellectual. Fine. But the kind of life that he led. His behavior. Now look at verse 20. Chapter 23 verse 1. Paul looks straight at the Sahindri. And said, My brothers, I have fulfilled my duty to God in all good conscience to this day. As my Paul Mushet Nabrabo, and yes, one name Homer be brain tea and the money in the packet here, a womb, so one name Homer, dear name, mum, not dear, and a brabon so, or shena da jesu ye. Now, as in a Paul, Jenny, any a shay, a big gaffono can say, and your nom, media, a one name permu. Now Paul here seems to be telling the Sahindri that brothers, I have been reading my heart eh, along with the scriptures, if you like. I've been reading the scriptures along with reading my heart. Paul Till today. Now, my yes, are at the When we are reading the scriptures, let us read our hearts as well. Because the scripture is light. There is also a light in your soul. Put it side by side. Read. Now, King and make the necessary correction on the inner man. So bit matinitini, no me nyina ewo emu nipanimu. Read not to go and preach to other people. 
But read the scriptures side by side. Your heart. Second Corinthians 1 verse 12. Are we together? Now this is our boast. Our conscience testified that we have conducted ourselves in the world and especially in our relation with you with integrity and godly sincerity we have done so relying not on worldly wisdom but on god's grace now now this is our boast our conscience testifies that we have conducted ourselves well in the world now, we have done so with integrity and godly sincerity. We have done so by the grace of God. Great man. I want you to bow down your head and submit your spirit in before God. That we can also say that this is our boast. We have walked in integrity and godly sincerity. That our conscience testified that we have conducted ourselves well in the world. What is in your spirit, man? What are you hiding? You are going before the altar. Is it true that what they have against you, you have really committed an evil? So, Let's pray that God will help us to walk with good and clear conscience before God and man. If he helped Paul by his grace, he can help you by his grace if you if you desire it. Come on. Imo liberia sakatanda. Help us, O Lord, by the power of your spirit. We want to be good Christians. Good Christians on the inside. That my Lord, our conscience will not condemn us, O God. Help us and strengthen us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we want to continue. However, See, sometimes your conscience might be clear, but it may not mean that you are not guilty. Because conscience is subjective. There's a light in your soul, but it depends on the brightness of the light. There are certain things you may not even see. Conscience depends largely on the individual's exposure. Now, as in knowledge, all information available to him or her. Now, so sometimes you may not feel that your conscience is condemning you, but it does not mean that you are not at fault. There are certain people, okay, let me just go slowly. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3. First, no, verse 3. Then you move me answer. I care very little if you die if I'm judged by you. I care very little. The people are disturbing him. <laughs> he said, I care very little. They are saying, look at his nose, look at his... Sometimes people worry me, say, these people are insulting you on, the, on uh, social media. What should I do? 
Let them continue. I'm not the only person that people will insult. If you don't want people to insult you, don't be a leader, I guess. Put your light under a bushel. And sometimes, so I want to WhatsApp it for you. You WhatsApp the insult for me. <laughs> for, for what? <laughs> there was this lady that we had to excommunicate. Anytime that he fashioned something evil about me, she would send me a copy. And that is how wicked people can be. And these people, I'm not the only person they are insulting. And then I can say, oh, I don't mind. But the fact that you don't mind, Paul is saying that I don't mind. By my human let me just take it. I care very little if I'm judged by you or by any human court. Indeed, I do not even judge myself. Smartphone Paul or Senna Media, a Yame Adikitwebi, Anna, a Madikitwebi, some more Anna, Nippebi, a Shedda, a Bumia thing. And so, me mummy wanting. You become a bit sarcastic here. Huh, it just, means yeah, that. The insult is having effect on him. <laughs> it's paining him. <laughs> yeah, the church in Corinth was a handful for him. Yeah. Handful for him. He visited once and he started the church. He visited the second time. It was serious. So the third visit, he says, I don't know whether I should come or not. And if I come, <laughs> yeah, but that is human being. Eventually, he will get good people out of them now verse 4 the big one my conscience is clear but he puts comma but that does not make me innocent it is the lord who judges so sometimes your conscience is clear. But it doesn't mean you are innocent. Because we have said that conscience is subjective. It depends on the information that you have. Sometimes when you have the whole information, you say that, oh, I made a mistake. I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Therefore, judge nothing before the appointed time. Wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motive of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. When he says wait until the Lord comes, I don't want you to look at this as an eschatology. He always comes. Conscience is subjective. One can have a weak conscience or a strong conscience. It depends largely on the individual's exposure and, as I've said, the knowledge or information they have at a time. And as Christians, this has a direct bearing on our faith. People who have strong conscience may have strong faith in certain things because of the knowledge that they have at a time. Now, 1 Corinthians 8, verse 9. I'll add a 10. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. Verse 10. For if someone with a weak conscience, weak conscience, sees you with all your knowledge, the, um, the, the, the amount of knowledge this person has makes his conscience strong. But there's somebody who is not so much exposed, and the person, Paul says that, 
uh, concerning the rituals and some of uh, uh, food sacrifice by idols and not that this person has a weak conscience so far as these issues are concerned ti cho sem ne se mon hwe ye na e ho kwa mo wo no an to wo a wo ye mre no sintidua na se obi obi hunu a na se obi hunu wo wo munim de ho se wuti abosomsom e didi a e ma na hunim a e mre no e nya aho den en kodi obonsam afore de echi it means we have strong conscience so conscience is subjective it depends on that individual some too have their conscience seared they have locked up their minds there are certain people when they step on your toe they will turn their face like that Hmm. It is better not to say wish. When you say wish, then they'll press it. They have they have locked up their minds. I didn't know. They've sold themselves to evil. Some have lost all sensitivity. You see, there are some ladies they can wear pants up to this side. Almost naked. Now on as one And then they go walking among young men. They shock everybody but themselves. And then when they come back to their rooms, did you see what you saw that young man, the way he was looking at me? People like this, when, when they sleep, if another man's, another woman's husband, they brag about it. They brag about it. The light and the lamp in their heart, they have intentionally put it off. First Timothy 4, verse 1 and 2. First Timothy 4, 1 and 2. That spirit clearly says that in the latter days, some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Verse 2. Such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose conscience have been seared as with a hot iron. Yeah. Hypocritical lies. There are certain people, they know they are telling lies, but they will confidently tell their lie. They have locked their conscience. They have locked their conscience. But we together. Yeah. Verse 2. 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 Verse or bring to your consciousness what you have not conceived as in evil or a sin or an offense done to a neighbor. So when you may wo, so when you may mire wo, so when you may dino, when you ankupa unhum, obe tu miye Kenya when you may ama when you ba unhoso ama boni biya when you wajin se oba be ye krampono edi etia obi no we you edi efehu. First Corinthians two verse nine and ten. I'll add a verse 11. However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. Her mom said, Yeah, what should I say? Dear, a new one here, not a so empty, not a mark, come and no ma o nyankopon asiesie ama wo a wo dono no eno 
These are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. So God reveals things to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thought or a person's spirit except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thought of God except God's own spirit. I do not know what is in his spirit. But he knows. He knows. But the spirit of God such as all spirits and knows all things therefore if you are offering your gift at the altar and then remember your brother that your brother or sister has something against you now leave your gift there in front of the altar first go and be reconciled to them then Come and offer your gift. Now, in other words, within all that John has said together, all that we have said about the Spirit of God and conscience, we are saying that if something is brought to your consciousness, by the spirit of God. Now, if you and why if something is brought by the spirit of God, not just you remember that someone has done something. First, before any other thing, go be reconciled with the brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. So we are saying that when you are convicted by the Spirit of God, because he convicts of sin and of righteousness, then leave your offering and go and reconcile first with your brother. So... And then come and take your offering. Otherwise, go ahead with your offering. Otherwise, if your conscience does not condemn you, and the Spirit of God is not bringing anything to fall that will grab you and convict you. Go ahead with your offering. See, the Spirit's direction is simple. First, be reconciled with your brother. Go back the way you came. Sort out the problem. Come, 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 come and worship God. Because you ought to be right with men before you can be right with God. Now Jesus does not mention the other person. He says you. The one in whose conscience he has pricked. To go. Go. It is not a matter of rights or argument. You see, I can explain the side of my soul. This my is not the size of any coin. Once you are convicted, it says go. 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 You see, if you don't go, if you don't agree with the adversary quickly, he says that he will take you to court. And you will be jailed. See, there are so many people who are spiritually locked up. Because they are so guilty. It doesn't matter whether you lock up your conscience or not. See, your adversary will lock you up spiritually. Because the Spirit of God is not And you see, the problem that I have with the devil and righteousness is that 
knows all of us. And then you go to God and say that God, this is your elder. I have to lock him. He knows when to lock you. Because the Bible is law. 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 the a true mark of the saint is that he can wave his or her own rights and obey the Lord Jesus. Your own rights. So it's not arguing. It's not the side, my side of the story. He can wave his or her own right. And obey the Lord Jesus. Then there is the glad, simple, unhindered offering of your gift to the Lord God Almighty. So, so why do you have to continue arguing with your husband? Wave your right. Wave your right. Then there will be that glad, simple, unhindered offering of your gift to God. What an evening. And you may think, and yes, we want, want to go rise go. to our feet. Yes, sorry, I won't buy bomb away. I don't want to end this broadcast without giving you space to accept Jesus as Lord. Now, maybe your conscience is pricking you of evil. But you are not a Christian. First of all, give your life to Jesus. And then plead this blood to wash you and wash your conscience. You want to give your life to Jesus. I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Lord God. Today I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I repent of my sins. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Father, help me. If you have prayed this simple prayer in faith, you are born again. He has forgiven you of all your sins. And join us in prayer now. As we forgive one another. So that our prayers will not be hindered.